Hello everyone, my name is Keely. Welcome to my channel. Welcome back if you've been here before and welcome to my new house, my new filming location maybe, and my new state. If you haven't seen any of my recent videos from this year, I moved from South Texas to Colorado and this is the very first video I am filming in my new location. So you can see my books are stacked. I have about 27 book stacks all around my room. My room is smaller than the one I moved from and I also didn't move with my bookshelves because I am planning on slowly buying brand new Billy bookcases. I've never had Billy bookcases and I currently have two. I have one right here that you can see and it is a smaller one and then behind you I have a very very tall one that goes all the way to the ceiling and so slowly I'm going to collect those so that these book stacks will become less and less. But if you've also watched my videos, you will know I went from black bookshelves to now white bookshelves. So things might look a little different, so hopefully it still looks okay. So today I am here to film my August wrap up and tell you all about the books that I read in the month of August. I managed to read 10 books. My average rating was a 3.2, so not great, but I read 3,748 pages. As always, I'm going to talk about these books in the order that I read them in, and the first book I read in August was Chain of Gold by Cassandra Clare. This is book one in the Last Hours trilogy. So if you are not familiar with Cassandra Clare's books, you cannot start with this trilogy. You will be severely confused and behind with who the characters are and the connections that they have between all the other characters that we know. And you also need to have an understanding already of the Shadowhunters, the Nephilim, the demons, and things like that and how this world works. So by the time you get to this book, you are deep into the series. Like I can't remember overall what number book this is in the series, but we're so far in. And this one actually takes us back to 1900s London, and we follow the children from the couple in The Infernal Devices, which The Infernal Devices is such a great series. I absolutely love that. So it was so much fun to be transported back to London in this old time period. I think Cassandra Clare really excels writing in London in that time period. And it was also so great, once again, to see all the characters we know and love, to see Tessa, Jim, Will, Matt, Agnes Bain. I just love them so much so getting those little cameos is fun. Also to see them as parents is great because you know Will I'm like how are you gonna do it? And he did it and he's so good at it. But there are also so many characters in this book and I will admit at the beginning it was very hard for me to keep straight who was who and how were they connected to the characters we know and love and the family timelines and all of those things. Eventually I did start understanding where things were going but it took me some time to keep everybody straight. I will also say I hate Grace. I hate Grace and I'm so concerned with where the series is going. I honestly, <laughs> naive little me, thought when I started reading this this was going to be like a completely drama free story and we were just going to follow these characters. No, no, no. Miss Cassandra Clare was not going to let that happen. She really knows how to get you attached to these characters and then stab you in the heart and twist the knife. So I enjoyed this one but these books are getting longer and longer for like not really any particular reason and because it was hard for me to keep the character straight at first I am going to give this one four stars but I'm looking forward to reading more and I'm so glad I finally picked up this book. The next five books I read I did a reading vlog for where my ghost jar chooses my TBR so I will leave that linked down below so that you can see my more in-depth thoughts because I'm just going to go through these pretty quickly. The first book I read in that video was The Boy with the Bookstore by Sarah Ekavar Smith and this book has a really interesting premise. We follow this woman named Joelle who owns a Filipino bakery and right next door she is crushing on Max who is the bookstore owner. The landlord tells them they're going to do some renovations so they're actually going to have, have to share a space and combine their bakery and bookstore together and they're both very excited because there's some chemistry and flirting between them but things start going wrong and tensions between them arise and they end up kind of competing and doing like these pranks against each other. So this book was not great. The little pranks and jokes they pull with each other are very very petty and very immature and there were also a lot of scenes in here where they would get mad at each other and they would refuse to see things from the other person's point of view. Like Joelle could not understand where Max was coming from in a lot of very personal aspects so I didn't like how she would get upset with him without understanding or trying to understand in any way so I gave this one two stars. 
Next, I read Other Terrors, which is an inclusive horror anthology. And overall, this was not my favorite anthology. Um, there were a lot of authors that I had never read from before. There were also authors that I was really excited to read from. And luckily, I did end up enjoying those stories of the authors that I wanted to read from. There are some people in here that I will probably never read from again. Overall, there were more misses than hits for me. So I gave this collection two stars. Next, I read The Lost Bookshop by Evie Woods, and in this book, we follow three different points of view, and this is kind of like a historical book, because one of the points of view we follow is back in the 1920s, and she is fleeing her home because her family wants to marry her off, and she does not want to get married, so she goes and discovers this magical bookshop. Now, the other two POVs we follow are a man and a woman who are trying to find this magical bookshop. So I really liked the little hint of magic we get in here. My favorite kind of stories are when books are set in the real world and you get an unexplained magic in them. That's really the only kind of fantasy I'm drawn to, so I really, really liked that aspect. However, the characters in here weren't my favorite, and because this is such a character-focused story, you really need to like them. And unfortunately, all three characters cheated in each of their POVs, and I just did not like that. Um, I also did feel a little bored at times with this, so I liked it, but didn't love it, and I gave it three stars. Next, I read The Bodyguard by Catherine Center, and this is an adult romance where we follow this girl who is a bodyguard. She works for this massive company who they take care of celebrities, rich people all over the world, and they have these different assignments, and she is highly trained. And one day, her person that she has to protect is the most famous actor on the planet, and she is not looking forward to it because she is going through a very terrible breakup, but when we get to meet the famous actor, there might be somewhat more chemistry there. I loved this one, and I love that this book took the bodyguard trope and turned it on its head because the woman was the bodyguard of the man. It was so good, and the bodyguard stuff was actually really, really fascinating. I love a story about a famous actor, and this one was just chef's kiss so good. The main two characters, Hannah and Jake, also had amazing banter and chemistry. And not only was this a romance, but it also had high stakes, and it was just so good, and I gave it five stars. I can't wait to read more from Catherine Center. Next, I read The Lords of Night by J.C. Cervantes. This is book one in the Shadow Bruja series, which is actually a spin-off series of his Storm Runner series. <laughs> are you following along? Anyway, these are mythology books under Rick Riordan Presents, and I am slowly trying to read all of the books under that imprint. And this one in particular follows Mayan mythology. So in this series, we follow a young girl who we meet in the original series. So, so far, all of these Rick Riordan Presents books just haven't been hitting the way Rick Riordan's books do. I still want to continue reading them, but honestly, every time I read them, they enter my brain and immediately exit, so I really don't have a ton of thoughts to say about these books. They are fun, interesting mythology books, and I love learning about the different cultures that the authors write about, and they are own voices, so I do enjoy that aspect, but they're not anything special for me, so I'm giving this one three stars. The next book I read was Good Bad Girl by Alice Feeney, and I honestly don't know how to describe this to you, so I'm going to read this little part. It says, 20 years ago after a baby is stolen from a stroller, a woman is murdered in a care home. The two crimes are somehow linked, and a good bad girl may be the key to discovering the truth. So there's a lot of crime and mystery and intrigue in this book. It is a very fast-paced popcorn thriller, and I really enjoyed it at the time, but honestly, I'm struggling to remember any of the details from the book. But it is nice to know that I enjoyed another Alice Feeney book because I have loved and hated books from her in the past. So nothing too memorable, but I gave this one four stars. Next, I read Immortal Longings by Chloe Gong, and in this book, we follow a girl named Kala, who is actually the princess of the kingdom, but she has been hiding and faking her death for about five years now because she brutally murdered her parents. Now, there is a deadly game that happens every year in the kingdom, and the winner gets to meet the king, and so Kala wants to be in this tournament so she can win, meet the king, and kill him. So immediately that setup, that premise was so intriguing. Anytime there is a deadly game involved, I am so there. Unfortunately, this one is also a fantasy book and it is an adult fantasy book and I do not like adult fantasy. So the big downside for this book 
for me was the fantasy and the politics and the world building. I hated the world building. I do not like world building in books. I just want to know what's going on without all this extra exposition and details. I loved the game aspects and I really wish we got more of them because they were bloody and gory and brutal and that was my favorite part. I really did enjoy Kala as a character but I'm not going to be continuing with the series because again I think it's just going to continue to get more political and those are the parts of the story that I don't like. If you are an adult fantasy reader you might really enjoy those aspects that I did not. So overall I gave this one three stars. Next I read Her Heart's Delight by Renee J. Garrett and this is a historical romance set in Montana in the 1800s and we follow this very rich fancy woman Camille who is moving from Virginia to Montana and she buys this ranch because she has a dream of owning a horse ranch. Her neighbor across the way, Adam, is not happy she bought the land because he really wanted to purchase it so he is going to spend his time trying to come up with all of these schemes to make sure Camille leaves the land. So I am not an expert in historical romance. I have read Tessa Dare's books and I love them so I desperately want to read more historical romance because I love the genre but I would not recommend this one. This had so many problematic elements in it. First of all, one of the tricks and schemes that he pulls to try to scare her away is to get him and his men to dress up like Indians and pretend to attack her. No, 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 no. That is so bad. I get this was written in 1995, but no, that that's just not okay. Um, another aspect is two different sex scenes in here were borderline abuse. So the first one, she was completely drunk and she woke up the next morning sobbing in a ball. And the next one, she thought she was dreaming and she woke up to him having sex with her. No. So many problematic things. Absolutely do not recommend and I gave it one star. Okay, sorry if things look a little different. Of course my battery died and I have one more book to talk about so it always dies at the worst times. But the last book I read in the month of August was This Savage Song by V.E. Schwab and I picked this up on a whim. I did not expect to read this but this was really, really good. So the premise for this is we are set in a city that is full of monsters and there are basically two sides to the city, the north side and the south side, and one side is run by the Harkers. Now this man is a very, very evil man and basically you pay him lots of money so he can protect you from the monsters because he kind of controls them. They are like his slaves. On the other side of the city, we follow the Flynn family who is a lot more just and a lot more good, but it's not as safe over there because they are constantly in battle with the monsters. The really cool thing is that there are three different types of monsters in here and one of the characters we follow is a Sunai which is a type of monster. So August is this monster that we follow and he is in the Flynn family and so we see him kind of struggle with the idea of being a monster and so badly wanting to fight his literal nature and be good. On the other side of things we follow another character named Kate. Now Kate is Harker's daughter and she is trying to prove that she is a Harker but as she's doing this she's realizing maybe I don't want to be a Harker and Kate and August might have to work together. I loved this so much. I love this world. The monsters were so fascinating because the way that they are created is each from a different sort of violence and it's so cool to learn about them. I loved August. I am such a sucker for a character who is a literal monster and is trying with everything in them to be good and be human and I just I love that so much. Kate and August were both really really great characters and I think in the sequel we might get to see more of the world which I am super interested in and I gave this one five stars. This solidified V.E. Schwab as one of my favorite authors. So those are all the books that I read in the month of August. Let me know down below your favorite book that you read but that is it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. As always all my social media links will be down below and I will see you next time. Bye!